I have done tons of goofy rebuilds, like letting the CPU pick my entire team, tons of zero overall rebuilds, and combining rival teams, but this might be the goofiest rebuild, or at least most chaotic one I've ever done. We are going to be rebuilding the entire NFC at the same time, and we are going to see how many Super Bowls we can win for the NFC over these few years, because they were this year's Super Bowl loser. And this should be a ton of fun, and like I said, and maybe the most chaotic rebuild I've ever done. And I'm gonna make this intro super short, but the major thing is, if we can get to 3,000 likes on this video, it'll let me know y'all wanna see me do the AFC. And for the AFC, I have a different strategy, which I don't wanna spoil it, so I'll mention it later in the video, kinda towards the end-ish maybe, but it'll be a, a more extreme strategy, and maybe even more fun. So again, 3,000 likes and it'll let me know y'all wanna see that. We've been pretty easily hitting that lately, so thank you all for that. And subscribe Subscribe for more because literally all I do is Madden Rebuild, so if you like rebuilds, you're definitely in the right place, and it'll make you an OG of the channel for when we inevitably hit 10 million subscribers. Definitely. And last thing, no shout out for this video, but I did see a few people suggest a division rebuild, and I'm gonna say shout out to C4 for I guess this idea, because I did see him do some division rebuilds. I'm sure y'all know who C4 is, go watch him if you don't already, he's like one of my biggest inspirations for doing this. I've been watching him for like over seven years, he's a goat for sure. But without further ado, let's get into this rebuild. And you know what? I'm going to start this a really weird way. I'm going to steal some players that are current free agents so the AFC teams can't get them. So for the Philadelphia Eagles, we are going to sign Justin Simmons because I see some rumors of the Eagles wanting to sign him. I don't know if they will, but I definitely want to steal him for our conference. For the Cowboys, let's re-sign Stephon Gilmore. Not that they really need another outside corner, but still. And I might sign Micah Hyde back to the Packers. That's the only rumor I see for him. Probably won't happen, but why not? But now on to the good part. Let's get to the draft. And we, of course, have the number one pick for the Bears. Some of the draft order's a little weird, and we're gonna have to change that, but we at least have the number one pick as the Bears. And do I even have to talk about this? We're taking Caleb Williams. Now, number two, this should be the Commanders, not the Cardinals, and we are gonna give them Drake May. Wait, can I use her whatever team I want? Why is the C Hawks logo there. I'm on the Cardinals. I don't know. We're gonna pick Drake May <laughs> and we can take him. Okay, cool. In my opinion, that's who the commander should take. I just don't think that roster is good enough for a Jaden Daniels, who I think could be amazing. I just don't know if Jaden Daniels would necessarily work out on the commanders. We'll, we'll see. That could age very poorly. It depends on what else they do in the draft, but we'll see. And now our first non-pick, the Patriots get the third pick and they go with Marvin Harrison Jr. Again, <laughs> it's not exactly a, a great land spot for a quarterback, so Marvin Harrison Jr. would probably be a pretty good pick, but that makes things tough for the Cardinals here at number four. I was kind of hoping they would go with Jaden Daniels. I'm going to do something a little crazy, but I would honestly like if the Cardinals did this. I'm a huge Malik Neighbors fan, and I don't think he's that much worse than Marvin Harrison Jr. I think they're close-ish, so we're going to take him here. I could see that being controversial, but I don't care. <laughs> he's really good. And here we're going to be trading the Vikings two first-round picks up to the Chargers, and we are obviously going to be taking Jaden Daniels. I guess the rumor is J.J. McCarthy, but, you know, if they trade up and both of those are still available, then I think they should go with Jaden Daniels, because this is a very good quarterback landing spot. So now for the Giants at number six, that makes things kind of weird. I mean, I guess they could go with J.J. McCarthy. I wouldn't, but I guess they could. This could be another trade back spot, but I'm just going to give them Roma Dunze. I mean, we'll go with a really good receiver if we have to. And and the Titans at number seven, uh, I don't know who they went with. <laughs> it doesn't show. Who did they go with? Brock Bowers, apparently. And for the Falcons at number eight, we're finally gonna fix this pass rush and we're gonna go with Dallas Turner out of Alabama. The Bears at number nine? Uh, let's just go with the best player available. Let's go with Joe Walt. Probably not what the Bears are gonna do in real life because Joe Walt probably won't be available. But if he is, uh, we're definitely gonna take him. I feel like the Titans or maybe the Chargers will end up taking him in real life, but we'll see, you never know. But I think that's all the picks I'm gonna show here. I'll just show the rest in the 
draft recap. I just wanted to get through the top 10, and then we'll see how the teams are looking after the draft. But here's how the draft went. Obviously, we saw all these picks. No need to really go over them. It looks like the Jets went with Byron Murphy at number 10. The Chargers went Quinion Mitchell. The Broncos ended up taking JJ McCarthy, which is interesting. The Raiders took Olu Fashanu at number 13. We took Troy Fatanu to the Saints at number 14. I know numbers. The Colts went with Layatu Latu. We took Talise Fuaga. Wait, I saw something weird. Okay, we gave the <laughs> we gave the Seahawks Fuaga. We gave the Bengals or I didn't do it, but they took Nate Wiggins. Okay, hold on. What happened here? Oh, round two. Okay, I misread this as round one. I thought somehow it glitched and gave the Seahawks two first round picks and they took Cooper BB, but no, we're good. Okay, <laughs> I confused myself. I do that a lot, but definitely a super interesting first round. Here are the rest of the picks. I'll just go over them. I forgot to take Terry and Arnold and no team really took him for some reason. So he slipped all the way to 25. We gave the Bucks Graham Barton, the Cardinals Kool-Aid McKinstry. Y'all see the rest of these. And the last pick I made was Xavier Worthy to the Panthers with their first pick, which they definitely need some speed in that receiving group, and that'll add that. Also, the Patriots took Bo Nix all the way in the second round. The Cardinals went Jordan Morgan for some reason. I don't really know how much they need offensive line, but sure. I always respect adding to the O-line. But anyways, let's get into year one, and let's see how the teams are looking. But I think I'm gonna go over every NFC team, so... If you want to skip this, I guess you can, because it's probably going to take a minute, but also this is literally the point of the rebuild, so I don't know. The Cardinals, we are at 78 overall. We obviously added Malik Neighbors, but they also drafted. They had an interesting draft. Jordan Morgan, who we slid inside to guard. They also went Layden Robinson and Cedric Van Pran. They really wanted offensive linemen, apparently, and they also really wanted edge. <laughs> they went with Gabriel Murphy and Adiza Isaac. Also, Mason Smith, and then we obviously drafted Kool-Aid McKinstry, but they also drafted Kyrie Jackson. So they really loaded up on pretty much the same positions over and over, which I guess that is a pretty surefire way to fix a position group. But here's how the Bears are looking. They're an 85, 85, 81 overall. Obviously, Caleb Williams and Joe Walt, which that's, if they somehow get that class, that's insane. Of course, they don't need tackle that. I'm going to start Darnell Wright at right tackle, but they don't need tackle too bad. But I mean, if you can get someone as good as Joe Walt, I think you do that. I might sign a receiver. They did draft Malachi Corley. I apparently didn't give him a dev trait, but we'll see. We could sign a receiver, maybe. And then on defense, they also drafted Peyton Wilson, which I don't really think they need linebacker, but sure. They drafted Mo Camara. I really like him. Cedric Johnson. Pretty good draft, but I feel like weird, weird positions. They maybe should have prioritized receiver more. I might give Corley star dev, just because I feel like he deserves it. And the Atlanta Falcons are an 81 overall. It looks like they got Taj Washington and Ben Sinnott on offense. I like like that two new weapons for Kirk Cousins and then on defense they <laughs> they also added Chris Braswell so they have both Alabama pass rushers I'm sensing a theme here it seems like the CPU is also drafting the same positions I am for some reason they also grabbed Brandon Dorless I like that I'm kind of surprised they didn't go with a lineman because their depth isn't phenomenal but whatever <laughs> but the New York Giants are super interesting they're only a 78 overall but what they did in the draft is maybe a little questionable <laughs> on offense we of course gave them Roma Dunze but they drafted Michael Penix and yes I know I give a lot of the players in my draft classes hidden dev <laughs> It's just because they're like, most are lower overalls, so I just make up for that by giving them good dev traits. But yeah, they grabbed Michael Penix. They also grabbed Elijah Klein from what? Holy Cross? Or no, UTEP. And Jack Nelson. And then they didn't really have a good second running back, and it looks like the Dolphins cut Raheem Mostert for some reason, so we added him here. I don't think they drafted a corner for some reason or a D-lineman. They instead drafted Jonah Ellis, which they tried to draft a defensive end, but that's not really a 3-4 uh, defense defensive end, clearly, at 246 pounds. The CPU just doesn't know how to differentiate edge from actual defensive line. It looked like Roy Hop Robertson Harris got cut, so I signed him because they had like two defensive ends. And then they also drafted James Williams. So I think he'll be our starter at strong safety over Jalen Mills. This is definitely an interesting roster. This might end up being the worst in the NFC. We'll see. Depends on how the Washington connection can perform this year. You know, Michael Penix to Roma Dunze. We'll see. And it looks like the same are only a 77 overall or a 78 they have a, I'm stupid they have a 77 offense 78 overall of course we gave them Troy Fatanu but it looks like they also drafted Keon Coleman and who else <laughs> it looks like they grabbed Josh Newton it looks like Cameron Jordan retired, but they still have good players there. Who else did this team draft? 
They drafted Talia Tungavailoa. That's interesting after they already drafted Jake Hayner last year. All right, sure. I can't say this was a super great draft for the Saints. I guess they did get a couple good players on offense, though. The Vikings are an 81 overall. They have an 83 overall offense. And of course, we drafted them Jaden Daniels. But they also grabbed Bo Limmer, which is good because they definitely needed a guard. They also drafted Trevor Keegan, so they doubled up there. And they drafted McKinley Jackson, which is probably good because they don't really have the best D-line outside of Harrison Phillips. The Packers are also an 81 overall. It looks like they drafted Christian Haynes, Zach Frazier, Isaiah Davis, who I am a big fan of, Michael Pratt. That's interesting. Another team that I feel like is fine at backup quarterback, but sure. We, of course, gave them Terry and Arnold. It's interesting they didn't go for a linebacker. And they drafted Evan Williams and Tyler Davis. You know, we could start him. He's the same overall as TJ Slayton. Sure, why not? Pretty good draft for them. Few questionable picks, but at least a few starters. The Bucks are also an 81 overall. I'm sensing a little bit of a theme here. We, of course, gave them Graham Barton, but they also drafted Zach Zinter. It looks like they grabbed Jermaine Burton. Good player, but character concerns. Big time. Hayden Hatton, Marshawn Neeland. So definitely an interesting draft there. Got a few starters. Now this is going to be an interesting one. The Panthers. How did they do? Okay, so they're actually up to an 80 overall. They're better than the Saints here. We, of course, gave them Xavier Worthy. That's a terrible picture. I hate that one, but I couldn't really find a good picture for Xavier Worthy. They also grabbed Mason McCormick, which, you know, the more line, the better. I would respect it after last year. They also grabbed Ennis Rakestraw, Dwayne Carter, Nelson Caesar. I might start him for him just to see if he can develop. The Eagles are an 84 overall. I think they're the best team we've seen so far. They definitely had an interesting draft. It looks like they added Troy Franklin, Delmar Glaze, Jatavion Sanders. We also signed John Mechie because they only had five receivers and he got cut by the Texans. So I was like, sure, why not? That was before I realized they had Troy Franklin, but we'll still keep him. I guess we can maybe give... The Vikings didn't really have a great number three receiver. What if we do that? I think we'll give John Mechie to the Vikings. But on defense, we of course grabbed him. Cooper DeGene. I maybe should have grabbed Terry and Arnold. I just didn't notice him for some reason. I don't know why. But Cooper DeGene is still really good. They also grabbed Jordan Jefferson. Cool, I guess. Who else did they draft? How many picks did they have? I don't really see anyone else. That was only like four players. Or five, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. I only have Johnny Wilson at a 68. I need to go through and change some of my ratings. I feel like I should have him higher than that. That. But the Lions are an 83 overall. And we, of course, gave him A.D. Mitchell. They have Matt Gon... I don't know how to say his last name. Gon Cav... Gon Cavs? Gon... Ca I don't know how to say his name. I give up. They also drafted Jaden Hicks, which I don't really know if they needed more safeties, but sure. They grabbed Braden Fisk. I'm really surprised they didn't draft a corner. But this team doesn't have too many needs. I mean, this is a pretty damn good roster. And the 49ers are an 83 overall. I kind of thought they would be a little higher for some reason. Oh, yeah, I remember why. Trent Williams retired. That's why they're not a higher overall. <sighs> Nothing I can really do about that. I guess I could recreate him, but I'm sure some players retired for AFC teams too that didn't actually retire in real life, so I guess it balances out. So I'm glad we drafted Tyler Guyton. <laughs> they also got Andrew Rame, Jalen McMillan, DJ James, Edifon Olafoshio from Washington. I don't know why I tried to say that name so fast. I knew how it was going to go. Definitely an interesting draft, but I'm surprised they didn't go with more O-line. Like the only O-lineman this CPU drafted was Andrew Rame, probably in like the sixth round. I don't know. Hey, that was a pretty good guess. But the Rams are up to an 81 overall. They're looking pretty good. They have an 84 overall offense. Oh, I was going to say, how does the math work there? 84 and an 81 is only an 81, but no, it was doing the glitch where it shows the defense is just the same overall as the team overall. I love this game. Did they draft anybody on offense? At all. I don't see anyone. Like, I've been through these rosters to move players to right positions and all that, but I didn't really remember. They went all defense. So we gave them Jared Verse, right? But they also drafted Braylon Trice. It looks like they also got Jalen Ford, Chris Abrams Drain, which that's cool. This is a great cornerback group now. A bit old with the top two, but still really good. I'm a big Chris Abrams Drain fan. I'm a, I'm a drainer. They got Fabian Lovett. Okay, sure. A lot of teams love to, you know, steal my flow. You know what I'm saying? They just doubled up on positions we already had, but this should be a good pass rush 
Rush group, hopefully. The Commanders, I think, are the lowest overall team. I can't remember. They're only a 77. That's rough. So the O-line isn't great, but the only one they drafted was Isaiah Adams. Okay. <laughs> they also got AJ Barner. That's cool. Drake May, of course, we picked for them. They didn't pick a receiver, which that's fine. What did they do? Okay, they got Jeremiah Trotter. Oh, yeah, they got Javon Solomon and Darius Robinson. I guess we'll play him at defensive tackle. He's kind of a, a little bit of a tweener, I guess. Or what's his current weight? It says 285, so definitely more of an edge. I think we'll have him rotate between both. Defensive end and tackle. The Cowboys are an 82 overall. I kind of thought they would be higher, but it looks like they drafted Audric Estime, Tanner Bordellini. We, of course, gave him JC Latham. So it looks like they kind of fixed the O-line a little bit. They also grabbed DeCorian Clark. All right. They drafted Cameron Kinchins. They had a pretty good draft. Only an 82 overall, but I think they should develop a lot throughout the year. And then the last team, who I feel like I've already gone over, but maybe not, the Seattle Seahawks. They are an 81 overall. They <laughs> they did something they should maybe do in real life, and they went crazy on the O-line. We, of course, gave them Fuaga, but they also drafted Cooper Beebe, like we saw, and Christian Mahogany. See, if I would have known they were going to go with Cooper Beebe, I wouldn't have drafted Fuaga, because it was my plan to play him at guard, because they also have Abe Lucas. I guess we could make Christian Mahogany a backup, but I don't know. They got Cade Stover, though, Max Melton, Jalen Simpson. They didn't draft anyone in the front seven. That's interesting. Not even a linebacker, really? Okay, sure. But that was all the teams. And let me give my strategy here that I may or may not do. I might hard focus one team per division. Like the team that I feel does the best in Madden Simulation, we might try to make that roster the best. So for the NFC West, I think we'll go with the Rams because they don't normally have the best roster, but they still seem to do well. Is there a way I can show division standings? I don't know how to do that. Uh, okay, sure, I guess. For the NFC North, I, I don't know. Maybe the Lions? I've seen the Vikings do well at times. Same with the Packers. I don't know. I feel like all these teams do pretty well most of the time. For the NFC South, either the Falcons or the Panthers. Maybe the Panthers because they do have Bryce Young and he does well in this game. But both the Falcons and Panthers are usually very overpowered in this game a lot of the time. For the NFC East, I mean, do I even have have to say which team we might focus. I think that might be how we're gonna do this. Either that or we could just try to make every team good. We'll see what we want to do. But I think that's all for us to go over. So let's get to the midseason point and we will see how these teams are doing. Okay, well at the midseason point, it looks like the Seahawks and 49ers are both five and two. Every team in this division almost has a winning record or at least 500. The Cardinals are three and three and the Rams are three and four. None, nobody's horrible. That's really good to see. That's what I want. It looks like the Cowboys are the best team in the league. Big shocker there. What's weird is the Chiefs are nowhere to be seen. They're four and three. Okay, they're doing pretty well. It looks like the Giants are four and three. A lot of these teams up here are AFC teams, unfortunately, at least a few of them. But we, of course, have the Cowboys, Seahawks, 49ers, Eagles, Saints, Panthers. Our teams are doing pretty well. And it looks like the Chargers are the worst team in the league. Thankfully, not ours. But the Packers are also only one and five. That's really Really weird. Same with the Lions or they're two and five and the Vikings are two and five. What's wrong with that division? Are the Rams or the, the Bears the best team in that division? Why? <laughs> they're four and three. I guess they have Caleb Williams, but that's still interesting. I thought that entire division would be good, but uh, far from it. I think that's our worst division. So we'll try to fix that in the off season, but there isn't really much for us to do here. I'll just re-sign these players. If there's anyone super notable, then I'll, I guess I'll show them, but that might take 40 years. So we'll just see, I'll re-sign some players and we'll see where we end up. After that, we'll just get straight to the end of the year. But here at the end of year one, we had some interesting results for the NFC West, at least. The 49ers ended up winning it, and every other team finished with a losing record. Unfortunate. It looks like the Ravens were the best team in the league at 13-4. and four. The Eagles went 12-5, and five, same with the 49ers. And the Giants? <laughs> the Cowboys only went 11-6, and six, which, you know, sometimes they don't have the best record. I guess that's fair. The Bears went 10-7, and seven, and the Falcons and Panthers both went 10-7. and seven. Remember what I said about both of those teams. I think if they get better rosters, those could be the two best teams for us. Or the Cowboys. The Packers finished at 9-8. and eight. They bounced back as they should have. And what were the worst teams for us? So the worst team was only 5-12. and 12. That's really weird. But three of those four teams that went 5-12 and 12 were AFC teams. The Commanders were the worst team for us. The Cardinals went 6-11. and 11. Really, most of the teams down here are AFC teams. The Rams went 7-10. and 10, Same with the Lions. But most of the 7-10 
10 teams were AFC teams. The Saints went 7 and 10. Most of our teams were 8 and 9 or better. This was a pretty good first year, even though we didn't have the best team in the league. And for season stats, I'm obviously not going to check every team's individual stats. Let's go over some. Should I even check stats? Holy shit, JJ McCarthy. <laughs> Is he going to win MVP as a rookie? <laughs> no, it's going to go to Dak, it looks like. Or Mahomes. I don't know. It's close. Okay, I'm not going to go over individual stats or maybe Jalen Hurts. Okay, I think Jalen Hurts is going to win MVP. Let's just see who it is. It is Jalen Hurts. Okay, so we win one MVP already. Burrow at two, then Prescott, Mahomes, Deshaun Watson in the top five. It is unfortunately mostly AFC quarterbacks though. Only three NFC quarterbacks. Caleb Williams, Dak Prescott, and Jalen Hurts. Weird. Coach of the year, I never checked this, but it goes to Nick Sirianni. Offensive player of the year goes to Jalen Hurts. Troy Franklin as a rookie for the Eagles at number eight. That's interesting. Nothing else too weird though. Defensive player of the year goes to Micah Parsons. Pete Werner up there and Kaiser White, Joe Tryon. Okay, there's some weird players up here. Offensive rookie of the year, of course, goes to Troy Franklin. I guess not, of course. It could have gone to Caleb Williams, but it doesn't. Audric Estime at number three, which is huge for them. Michael Penix at four. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Jared Ver for the Rams. Chris Braswell at number two, Cooper DeGene at three, Jaden Hicks at five. I didn't even think he would play at all for the Eagles. Definitely an interesting list here too. Mo Camara at four, Josh Newton at nine, Javon Solomon at 10. Weird. And you know what? Just because we can, this is going to be a longer form video. Let's go over individual awards. Jalen Hurts for best QB, Christian McCaffrey for best running back, CD Lamb wins best receiver, Christian Haynes at number two for best O-lineman as a rookie, Christian Mahogany at four, Ryan Bates, this is a, an interesting list. <laughs> Michael Parsons wins best D lineman. Joe Tryon wins best linebacker, which he isn't really an off-ball linebacker, but sure. AJ Terrell wins best DB, that's really surprising. Definitely a weird first year. I didn't expect the Eagles to be our best team. And I don't want to curse the Eagles, so I'm not going to user them. Let's user the Giants? Because I feel like they don't really have a shot anyways at a 79 overall. And I mean, this division was ridiculous. It doesn't look like the Giants were particularly good either. Despite being 12 and 5, they had a mid offense and a below average defense. How did they go 12 and 5? But let's see some of the playoff matchups. So it's going to be 49ers, Panthers, Bears, Cowboys, and Falcons. Giants. I'm going to predict an upset. Mm, no, I'll say the 49ers are going to win. I'm going to say the Cowboys are going to win and the Falcons are going to win. We're really hoping for some upsets on the AFC side to make things easier for us. And it looks like the Falcons do win and the Cowboys and 49ers. The Chiefs unfortunately didn't get upset. We're really hoping for a Dolphins Jets AFC championship. And we are hoping for a Cowboys 49ers NFC championship. I guess it's fine if the Falcons win. They're pretty good. But who do I want to curse. Who's playing the Cowboys? <laughs> it's the Eagles, right? Let's curse the Eagles because we definitely want the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. Although the Eagles are an 87 overall. I don't know. Let's just see what happens. And okay, we did curse them with the exact same score, 28 to 21. Interesting. But it is going to be a Chiefs Ravens Super or er, AFC Championship. That's what I expected. And it is Falcons and Cowboys. That's what we were hoping for. This game is super predictable, like weirdly predictable. I was a hundred percent with predictions for the NFC side. That's weird. There's someone in the draft named Harold Wilbin, a left outside linebacker. I just noticed that. I don't know why. That's a weird name. But let's just simulate straight to the Super Bowl. My prediction is Cowboys Chiefs, but maybe not. Here it could go either way, but that's just what seems like is always the Super Bowl in this game. And it's actually Cowboys Ravens. That definitely works in our favor. Oh, and we have a Good amount of upgrades here for the Eagles. Two for Jalen Hurts up to a 96 and two for Troy Franklin up to an 80. Did he get a dev trait? He did. Okay, the Eagles are going to be a problem. I don't know how much they're going to compete with the Cowboys, but we'll see. And I have no idea how this Super Bowl is going to go, but let's see if we can win the NFC a Super Bowl here. My guess is no, but we do win 21 to 16. So we are already one for one on the Super Bowls. The Cowboys beat the Ravens 21 to 16. And who was Super Bowl MVP? Let's see. Eric Kendricks. I wouldn't have necessarily guess that, but sure. So that's an amazing start to the rebuild. We are already one for one, but I'm going to re-sign the rest of the players for these teams, and I will only let y'all know if we don't get someone back. God, the Eagles are looking rough. 
Holy. <laughs> okay, well, we got pretty much everybody back for every team. Everyone that we wanted, at least. I mean, there are backups here and older players that we just don't really need for every team. And this is where we can really make up some ground on the AFC. Because we made sure to get pretty much every good player back, while the AFC is probably going to be losing some players from almost every team. And we are definitely going to look to steal almost all of them. So let's see who is going to be available. Okay, well, not as crazy as I expected, but the Browns are definitely hurting here. Losing Joel Batonio, Wyatt Teller, Zadarius Smith, David Njoku. It's not like they were necessarily a massive threat, but that's just one less team to worry about. Oh, and also for the Saints, uh, as we all know, they don't exactly have the best cap situation in real life, so I had to do some things to them. No more Tyran Matthew. We could look to get him back, and we ended up cutting Alvin Kamara because that saved 22 mil. We might re-sign him to them, though. And I think our strategy, the one I am going to settle on is we are going to try to make every NFC team well balanced. I don't think we're going to try to create any super teams in this one because I don't think we need to. It's pretty rare that the highest overall team wins the Super Bowl in Madden simulation. It just kind of comes down to luck. So we are going to try to put every team in a position to get that luck. So we are going to find the biggest hole on every NFC team and fill that with the best free agent available at that position. Position. Sometimes not the absolute best overall, but the youngest, close to best player. Like I would consider Nick Harris the best center available, because he's seven years younger than David Andrews, and only four overall behind. So I'm going to look through, I'm not going to show me doing any of this, because that's going to take an eternity, but I will show the recap of what we're going to do. Okay, and I finally got every free agent figured out. I'm not going to be able to show every team's before we attempt to sign them, but I will be able to show who signs where and that should show us everyone that we get as the NFC teams so let's see as the Buccaneers I guess I can show this we're going for Wyatt Teller Brevin Jordan and Aziz Ajulari very minor upgrades these two are but Wyatt Teller would be huge because this old line is horrible <laughs> so let's see who signs can I not do it as the Buccaneers I guess I have to do it as the Seahawks which as the Seahawks who are we going for here nobody <laughs> I'm really only going for players that would be upgrades and are younger, so I'm not going for like 31-year-old players. I'm kind of rebuilding this how I would do a regular rebuild, staying away from younger, or no, staying away from older players and really only going for younger players. Call me the Leonardo DiCaprio of Madden franchise. That's probably not a good thing to say. Let's see who wants to sign. Okay, and already I see an NFC player signed, but let's check the overall signings. I'm still in running back. So it looks like Joel Batonio does go to the Saints. Nick Bolton goes to the Packers. Zadarius Smith to the Panthers. David Njoku unfortunately goes to the Patriots. I was trying to get him on the Panthers too, but that didn't work out. Jalen Warren to the Cardinals. Garrett Bowles also to the Cardinals. Michael Pierce also to the Cardinals. Justin Reed to the Rams. Jedrick Wills to the 49ers. Rashad Bateman also to the Cardinals. Milton Williams to the Vikings. Joshua Palmer to the Commanders. Matt Hennessy to the Commanders. Some of these aren't as important, but you can see them here. Not many more down here anyways. We got mostly everyone major. However, there are still some pretty pretty important players like Wyatt Teller, DeAndre Hopkins, Tyran Matthew, players that I thought would sign immediately but didn't. And you know what? I'm going to check here. Not that I'm interested in Grover Stewart as the Seahawks necessarily. I just want to make sure that these teams still have a lead. So the Giants do still have a lead for Grover Stewart. The Buccaneers, ooh, they're tied with the Jets. Okay, well, let's try to do something about that. If we have the money, I, okay, never mind. I restructured the Buccaneers. We were running low on money, but I just forgot to restructure all their deals. So now we have almost 50 mil to work with. But let's go, I guess, very player friendly. Will that get us a full green offer? It does, okay. I'll check the rest of these, and I'll make sure we can get all these players. Ooh, the Titans are interested in Tyran Matthew. The problem is the Saints are actually entirely broke. And <laughs> the Saints have the worst safety group out of any team. Damani Richardson at only a 66 and Jordan Howden at only what a 73 but I'll get the rest of this figured out and we'll see what happens okay we got everything figured out and now let's go for the second and hopefully final wave of free agents so it looks like Wyatt Teller does sign with the Buccaneers D hop goes to the Giants Tyron Matthew the Falcons didn't really really need a safety but they were the second most safety needy team and I just wanted to keep him going keep him from going to the AFC I know he is older but still we don't 
don't want to let them get any good players. But Grover Stewart went to the Giants. Michael Carter did thankfully go to the Panthers. I think he was the best corner available, which, you know, that's, I mean, he's a, a good player. He's pretty good, but it's kind of crazy he was the best. Byron Murphy went to the Vikings, Spencer Brown to the Giants, and then, oh, he didn't get Rondale Moore. I can't remember who I wanted him for. Oh, well, he's only a 75 overall. I think we'll live without him. Oh, yeah, and we got Nick Cross for the Saints, because that was like the only other safety we could afford for them. That wasn't like 32 years old. <laughs> but now with free agency done, most of these teams should be very, very well-rounded. That was my goal with this free agent class, to get every team in a competitive position. Now, unfortunately, there is a world where this backfires and all these teams take each other out. But we are going to hope that all this strong competition helps these teams develop and become even better in Super Bowls. That's the goal. But let's get to the draft. And this is going to be a super interesting one. I don't think we have the number one pick. And unfortunately, I think the draft is going to be dominated by the AFC, at least in terms of early picks. Let's find out. But here in the draft, the Steelers actually have the number one pick. You know, thinking about it, the AFC teams that are in the top five here are weird. The Steelers, the Texans, and the Chargers? The Chargers maybe make sense, but the Steelers and Texans? I mean, they've never had a losing record under Mike Tomlin. I don't think. Is it a streak or is it that he's never had a losing record? I don't know. But let's switch back over to the Seahawks so we can control this thing. And let's see what the Steelers do with the number one pick. There is a good quarterback, but, you know, I'm assuming the Steelers still have at least one of their quarterbacks they still have both Justin Fields and Russell Wilson that doesn't really mean anything in Madden though because they a team could have a 99 overall 23 year old x-factor quarterback and they still might take one at number one overall and they don't of course they don't they go with Jay Camp a defensive end no idea if he's good but he was a 4-3 defensive end and he's gonna be playing as a 3-4 defensive end so that's fun but for the commanders here I think it's much easier to switch over to the teams because that's where I have the right players focus scouted and honestly this still isn't a very good roster. They don't really have a, a dominant corner. I'm realizing we have two nickel corners in Jaquan McMillan and Jartavius Martin, but whatever. But neither of them are the, the best overalls in the world. There's no, like, great pass rusher here. There's no great safety, even though Jeremy Chin does have superstar. This team has, like, no star talent on defense, <laughs> other than defensive tackle. I'm really taking my time with this first pick, because it is the first pick, but I don't know what to do with it. There are just so many directions that we could could go that it's almost overwhelming oh what oh my god <laughs> jamie cohen ran a 431 in a 426 at his pro day at quarterback uh how good was drake may he was pretty good a lot of picks but not not bad enough to replace after one year he was still good what is our most quarterback needy team we kind of have it set up to where we don't really have any quarterback needy teams but there are definitely guys who underperform in this game the major one I'm thinking of is the next closest NFC team in the Cardinals with Kyler Murray. Although, he actually was pretty good this year, so maybe not. Ooh, he was pretty horrible in the 2023, not actually real life, but trying to get to this point season. <sighs> do we do we trade down with the Cardinals here as the commanders and then trade Kyler Murray away to a quarterback needy AFC team? That might be the strat. And I'm not gonna necessarily make the Cardinals pay too much here because they are our friend here. I'll make them pay like a normal amount, but usually you have to pay up a little bit more for a quarterback. We're not really going to make them do that here. All right, we're going to make them give up their next two second round picks or I guess their second round pick for this year and next year, I should say, for the number two overall pick. And this is mostly, like I said, to stop an AFC team from getting Jamie Cohen, who we know is a top five talent, not fully scouted here. But this might be the weirdest quarterback I've ever seen. Maybe best? I don't know, but let's take him. Imagine he had normal dev. No, he has 97 speed, 95 throw power, hidden dev, bald. <laughs> He's interesting. <laughs> and now, as the Cardinals, let's trade away Kyler Murray. Maybe one of the most underrated players in the NFL, but is usually kind of horrible in this game. Straight up. The Jets literally don't have a quarterback on the roster, but they can't afford Kyler anyway, so whatever. Oh yeah, I saw that the, <laughs> the Patriots drafted Bo Nix and then paid Mac Jones a decent amount of money to to be their, their backup. But we are gonna be trading Mr. Kyler Murray to the Raiders for a first round pick next year. I feel like pick
pick 13, which is what they have this year, is a, a bit rich for, you know, kind of an injury-prone quarterback, even though he is good. So we'll take a first next year. I have no idea what Kyler Murray's trade value is, because I think he's underrated, but I don't know how the NFL views him. Plus, he has injuries, plus apparent character concerns, which I think is fucking stupid. I don't know. So now, Jamie Cohen, the fastest quarterback maybe ever, maybe, I say because Michael Vick, is now an Arizona Cardinal, and Kyler Murray is a Raider. This is a weird Raider build. But now, unfortunately, we don't have the next two picks. The Texans go with Aaron Marion, a corner, who was very good, by the way, and Cecil Fells. I didn't really get a good look at him. But now back is the Commanders. Henry Buckley looks kind of ridiculous. <laughs> A awareness, play rec, power moves, and tackle, B finesse moves. We don't know what his pursuit or block shedding are, but we can assume they're pretty good. The problem is he isn't like the fastest player ever or the strongest. He has good strength and speed for being 277 pounds, but I fear him having normal death. Oh shit. Darrell Hill at safety. Only decent acceleration, but elite speed and strength. Ridiculous looking player. Is he worth a top five pick though? Maybe. <laughs> I think we are just gonna take a chance on Henry Buckley though and hope he doesn't have normal dev even though I kind of think he does. Let's take him and he doesn't. Hidden dev, 90 acceleration, 86 speed. Did he have elite? Oh yeah, he had elite acceleration. Okay, he could be a really good player. Now for the sake of this not taking 42 years, I'm only gonna show our picks in the top half of the first round. I'll make all these first round picks, but I won't show all of them. I'm scared of picking next user pick. I don't know if that'll switch us to the Rams or, or pick six. So I'm just gonna do it one by one. There goes Emmanuel Weathers. He looked really good. That sucks. And Darrell Hill. Oh. And Marquise Daniels. All the good players went. Cool. But for the Rams, at number 10, I would definitely say linebacker, D-line, and maybe left tackle are the biggest needs, although I don't like taking tackle in the first round. I just don't like taking tackle, period, most of the time. I'm just not good at taking them straight up. Although Kari Claxton looks pretty good, I feel like I've been fooled by players that look even better than him, though. All right, I'll shut up and we'll see what we want to do. I think I mostly scouted linebackers for some reason, or at least one of them was. I don't know about taking linebacker round one, let alone the top 10. Alexander Garrett looks okay. A lot is riding on this pick though, because this is one of our focus teams. Ooh, Doug Castle in the second round looks pretty good. I don't know if he's worth a top 10 pick, but he might be. Ooh, another Baldy. Is Baldy's just take, or is taking Baldy's just the strategy in this game? I don't I don't know. I think I might just take a chance on Walter Claxton, or Walter Claxton, Kari Claxton. I don't know. If we're talking first round, they better have two A finesse stats if they're an agile type. He has A run block finesse, but not B pass block, or not A pass block finesse. We're not gonna take him. I'm so indecisive in the top 10. I need everything laid out perfectly for me to not feel confused. <laughs> there are just too many options. I get stressed out, man. Do we go with the linebacker? There really isn't like a great player for any position of need here. Carl Farmer might be okay, but he doesn't look like the best run defender at all. <laughs> Are we gonna go with the linebacker top 10? Oh, this is gonna be an insane pick. All right, we're doing it. The only pretty much guaranteed day one starter I can find is Alexander Garrett for the Rams here. I'm gonna make this my last pick because this dragged on for so long. Not my last pick, but last one I'll show, but I'll give a really good recap. Let's go with Alexander Garrett to the Rams. He does have hidden dev, thankfully. That's the big thing we were banking on. On. I should have hyped that up more, but 88 speed, 91 excel, we'll take it. <laughs> I don't think he's gonna be great. I think he'll be like a 75, but I didn't know what else to do there. Okay, now with the draft over, here is how it went, and it was super interesting. It was a pretty strong draft class early on. Jay Camp to the Steelers, he was an 81, but we're mostly paying attention to the NFC here. Jamie Cohen is an 82 overall with hidden dev. Of course, 97 speed, 94 change of direction, 95 throw power. This might be the most terrifying quarterback of all time. He also looks like he might hide under your bed, so he, yeah, he's a little scary in that regard, too. Henry Buckley to the Commanders is a 79 overall. Holiday would have been a better pick, actually. That's kind of surprising, but, I mean, it's a one overall difference. Who really cares? Unless Holiday has, like, X Factor and Buckley only has star. And these three players all through here were pretty great and would have been good value. And Alexander Garrett, that was a pretty good prediction. He's a 75. Terrence Townsend to the Lions. This was technically 
basically a reach. He wasn't supposed to go until the second round, but it was a it was an all right pick. Just no dev trait. Unfortunately, this safety to the Raiders was an 80 overall. One pick before we took James Manning to the Saints, which he's good, but only a 78 with no dev trait. He definitely is good, though. Carl Farmer, only a 74, I figured, because he's a bad run defender, but he does have a dev trait. Just 74 tackle, 72 block shed. That's not ideal. 81 power moves, though. 91 strength. He would probably be a good overall defensive end, and that's where we're going to play him. But Roman Sander to the Seahawks, 77 overall. He had hidden dev. We did take Doug Castle to the Vikings, 76 overall. Some of these picks weren't great, but they were fine, just nothing too notable. This is why I stay away from first round tackles usually. Sean Thomas to the Giants, only a 73. Kari Claxton, also only a 73 to the 49ers. But Derek Morris to the Falcons, 77 overall safety. And then my last pick was Jaden Chamberlain. Another technical reach. He wasn't supposed to go until like day three, but he was the best looking guard available. There might have been a better one. I don't know. Harold Wilbin ended up on the Seahawks and he was actually a 76. No dev trait though. Definitely an interesting draft class. Not the strongest ever, but definitely some really good players. But let's get into year two and let's get a look at some of the teams. But for the Seahawks, they are an 84 overall heading into the year. I'm not quite sure what they did in the rest of the draft. I see Samson, a running back down here. Oh, it looks like they did grab a defensive tackle in Josh Hudson. He looks decent. He's 6'1", 359 with 97 strength. And then of course we gave them Sander. Feels wrong to say that name without the S. But they're definitely an upgraded team, as most of our NFC teams are. And the Dallas Cowboys are surprisingly only an 82 overall. I thought this would be one of our better overall teams by this point, but you know, as we know with the Cowboys, that might not matter, but they had a good draft. They added a lot of hidden devs. It looks like seven to be exact. I don't know how many picks they had, but they might've gone seven for seven on hidden devs. We of course drafted them Chamberlain, but they definitely need another receiver. So hopefully we can get them that this off season and hopefully that doesn't hinder them too much. But here's a look at the commanders. They might be our lowest overall team at only an 80, but this is a team that should develop a lot throughout the year. I mean, Drake May with Superstar Dev. They have a few rookies on offense. Westerman at right tackle. And then the defense is interesting. Of course, Buckley that we drafted for them. But they also drafted Chester North, a 76 overall linebacker. He looks really good. 93 hit power, 86 speed. Interesting. They might end up with a top five pick again, though. We'll see. And the Rams are an 82 overall, which I'm surprised isn't a little higher. Because in real life, they're definitely a team that has a lot of really good players, but they also have a lot of holes, especially on defense. And what we've been doing in this rebuild is just fixing holes for a lot of these teams. So I'm surprised they're not a little higher of an overall, but this is another team that's very young and should develop a lot throughout the year, especially on defense here. They also have, <laughs> they drafted Keys, who is 6'3", 267, uh, just slightly undersized to play D-end, 3-4 D-end. <laughs> what if we just bulk him up? How about that? We'll make him gain 30 pounds. How do you even add weight? Am I stupid? Is that not something you can do anymore? I, whatever. Either way, good defense, good overall team, and by next year could be one of our best teams. We'll see. But here's a look at the 49ers. They're, I think, our second highest overall team at an 86. The major problem with this team was the offensive line, and we pretty well fixed it. It's not great, but it should be better, hopefully. And then here's the defense. They picked Jennings at defensive tackle, 73 overall with hidden dev. He looks pretty good. That's really the only different starter on defense, I think. This was a hard team to keep together, believe me. It got very expensive, and it probably will be again this year. Ooh, is the Brock Purdy contract coming up? I think it is. <laughs> His face skin is horrible horrible. He looks like a zombie. That might be one of the worst face scans in the game. That's interesting. But here's a look at the Eagles heading into year two. Definitely a very interesting team. I mean, the, the offense is mostly just the Eagles with Troy Franklin. And then it looks like they drafted Chad Devine. He was a tackle. I moved him into guard. He'll start there. Something I'm noticing is a lot of the teams really like to value offensive line when they don't really need it that bad. And they really like to double up on on similar positions. Like, I think I drafted them Marquis Johnson, who isn't that good. So then they also drafted Joe Smith, who was a defensive tackle. I moved him to defensive end. They really like to copy what I do. It's almost like the picks that I make, the CPU doesn't process those picks. It's 
it's weird. Because defensive tackle wasn't really even a need. Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter are pretty much the main two that are gonna get playing time, so I don't know, whatever. Also, Cooper DeGene got up to superstar X Factor, that's cool. This is a really, really good roster. 92 overall offense and an 81 defense, which should go up throughout the year. But here's a look at the Lions heading into year two. They're up to an 85 overall. What did they do in the draft? <laughs> they drafted Strickland at tackle, which fine. Maybe he'll play guard for them eventually because Glasgow and Zeitler are older, but nothing that really would play a role other than Townsend, who we drafted for him. They drafted Singh at safety. He looks good, but I think they're fine at safety. Interesting draft. Interesting. I guess I don't really know what they could have upgraded necessarily. Maybe a receiver, but that's fine. Maybe the weakest draft so far, just in terms of like immediate impact, but good team. 85 overall. But here's a look at the Panthers heading into year two. Up to an 81 they're not our worst team, surprisingly. It looks like Xavier Worthy did get superstar dev. That's cool. What were his stats last year? I wonder. 800 yards, five touchdowns. I was kind of expecting a little better, but still good for a rookie for sure. Where did the... What happened to the depth chart? Where did the kicker go? Okay, that was weird. It like re rearranged it. That was interesting. But it looks like they also grabbed a couple of linemen. I guess Clark isn't that good, but Costanzo looks decent. And then I don't know. I was kind of stupid with this pick. I forgot I already signed Zadarius Smith. I just hadn't moved him to outside linebacker, so I drafted Calvin Smith for him, but he should play a future impact, because Jadavion Clowney and Zadarius Smith are older, so I think that'll be fine, hopefully. Other than that, decent looking team, nothing too crazy, but they could perform pretty well, we'll see. But here's a look at the Buccaneers. They were an 84 overall just a second ago. I must have messed something up somehow. <laughs> My fault, I guess. How did that happen? I didn't cut any starters. I don't think I cut anyone, other than like third stringers. I don't know, either way, we're an 83, we were in 84. It looks like they drafted Bagley at tight end. Javon Bagley. Ooh, he's a blocking tight end. What round? Fifth round. Okay, we'll see what his dev trait is. We'll definitely start him though. And then on defense, not much. Well, actually, Rosenthal, Farmer, Burnett, Woodson. Not many immediate starters, just one, maybe two if we start Farmer. And Clayton. This was a pretty good draft, especially on defense. They mostly went defense. It's huge that they got a pretty good linebacker, because this is probably Levante David's last year. It at least last year of being good because he is 35 now down to an 82 overall the green bay packers are an 84 overall i think they're the first team we've seen that actually has a better defense than offense i'm not 100 percent sure about that but this is still a pretty good offense and this is a team that underperformed last year so we'll see how they do this year they have a new center moran at a 72 overall with hidden dev and they really didn't add much in terms of rookies on defense beyond what i gave them they added staley at safety 74 overall. And then I think we drafted them Casey Walls. Yeah, at number 18. This will actually be probably a team to look at to do pretty well. Maybe not an insane record, but I do see the Packers do well in the playoffs a lot of the time. So we'll just have to see what happens there. Really not much different from last year though. Just developed. But here's a look at the Vikings heading into year two. They're up to an 82 overall. Only a 79 defense though. But Jane Daniels heading into year two up to a 79 with superstar dev. They also have Castle at receiver who we drafted for him, but they also drafted Walker, Kyle Walker at guard. He looks pretty good. 75 with hidden dev. And then on defense, it doesn't look like they drafted really much at all. A fourth linebacker, and they picked, instead of picking actual defensive ends, they picked two speed rushers that were like 250 to 60 pounds that I moved to outside linebacker. One didn't make the team because he just wasn't very good, but this is a power rush scheme. <laughs> I don't know why they went for speed rushers. That's literally all they have. I, I signed them Cameron Thomas because they literally didn't have a power rusher. I guess Andrew Van Ginkle is... Wait, is it a... What? Maybe it's not only a speed rush scheme. Or sorry, a power rush scheme, but it for some reason has Cameron Thomas lined up on the speed rush side. I, I don't feel like changing it. You do, you Madden. But here's a look at the Giants heading into year two. Definitely an interesting team, you know. Michael Penix, Roma Dunze, we added DeAndre Hopkins. They also drafted a really good tight end, J Julian Mabin, at a 76 overall with Hidden Dev. They also got a good running back. We drafted Thomas for him, who was only a 73 tackle, but went up to a 75 at guard. He's pretty good. And then their defense is surprisingly a higher overall than their offense, but other than Dexter Lawrence and Brian Burns, I mean, I guess they have Bobby O'Karake and Kayvon Thibodeau, but like they don't have any great corners or safeties. I don't know. This is an interesting team. I feel like this one probably won't do well, but I guess they went 12 and five last year with what was probably a worse team. So I don't know. We'll see. But the Saints are up 
up to an 81 overall. Still a lot of teams around the 80 to 82 range. A lot of 81s. This team, if we're gonna give up on a team, <laughs> it might be the Saints. They just don't really have a lot going for them, and what they do have going for them is kinda old. Like Alvin Kamara, Joel Batonio, Ryan Ramchek. Derek Carr is still their quarterback. Demario Davis. Even Marshawn Lattimore is probably getting close-ish to 30 by this point. 29. This is a, a tough roster. This is going to be a tough one to fix. It is doable, but of course with older players comes players not on rookie contracts. So this is also a very expensive team. We'll see how much we can fix it. It looks like they drafted another backup quarterback for some reason. They drafted a pretty good linebacker in pool. Chance pool, spelled with an S. Ugh, I'm gonna change that. I don't like that. Sorry if your name is Chance spelled with an S. Although I don't think I've ever seen that before, so probably not. I wish Manning had a dev trait at safety, but he's still a 78 overall. That's pretty good. I'm not sure how the future of this team is gonna be, though. But the Atlanta Falcons are up to an 83 overall. No changes on offense, mostly at all. Or defense, really, other than Tyran Matthew and Morris at safety, which I'm a little dumb. I kind of forgot we signed Tyran Matthew. That's why I drafted Morris. So I guess we'll play Matthew as our slot corner? That works, I guess. But this is definitely a team that's become pretty good. But second to last team here, the Bears, surprisingly, are one of the best teams here at an 84 overall. I guess that's not surprising necessarily, you know, landing Caleb Williams and Joe Wall in the same draft. But still, I mean, come on, it's the Bears. They don't exactly have the best recent history. They do have an 85 offense, but their defense isn't too far behind at an 83. Another team that looks like they more so just went for depth, like they added a 77 overall linebacker. He looks very good. I <laughs> I question why, because they already had TJ Edwards, Terrell Edmonds, Peyton Wilson, and Jack Sanborn, but I mean, sure, why not? But also Morant at corner, they drafted Carey at defensive tackle, Pat Carey. Oh yeah, and we drafted him Hess, Kyle Hess at defensive end. Why did they have two first round picks this year? Are they who I traded down with for like uh, Jaden Dane? No, that was the, the Chargers, or was it the Cardinals? I don't know. No, that was the Chargers, but I don't really know why we have two first, or had two first round picks. And Unless, oh no, Morant wasn't a pick I made, never mind. He was their second round pick, I think. Yeah, never mind, I'm just lying. Hess was the pick I made. But either way, good team, and a lot of young players on this team. So we'll see how they do this year. And now the last team, the Arizona Cardinals. And we might have saved the most interesting for last here. Because of course they have Jamie Cohen at quarterback replacing Kyler Murray. And of course he's gonna be getting to throw to Malik Neighbors and Trey McBride, which they aren't the craziest overalls in the world yet, but they could be in the next few years. The defense isn't really too different from even the real life Cardinals defense. The only real major addition this year was Michael Pierce at defensive tackle. And on offense, we obviously also added Garrett Bowles, Jalen Warren, Rashad Bateman. So hopefully, despite it being only an 80 overall, hopefully they can do well. But that's it for the team breakdowns. Let's get to the midseason point, and we will once again see how some of the teams are doing. And this year, unless it is actually a really terrible team, on paper for any underperforming teams based on overall we might make some changes to them we'll see but at the midseason point again things for the nfc west look pretty similar to last year three teams doing very well with the rams falling behind this year but as the seahawks we are five and two now unfortunately to simulate here i was accidentally usering the cowboys so <laughs> this is really making me realize like whatever team you're usering doesn't necessarily do well. It seems like the game's against you no matter what team you're on. It's interesting. And once again, the Commanders are the worst team in the league with the Saints being the second worst. So we actually have three of the four worst teams in the NFL. We should probably do something to try to change that. The Giants are also struggling. Of course, the Rams, the Panthers, the Bears. It doesn't look as good for us this year. The Chiefs are undefeated at 6-0. The Eagles and Packers are 6-1. There are two best teams. The Raiders are also 6-1. The Seahawks, Falcons, and Lions are 5 and two. Just out of curiosity, let me check some team overalls of AFC teams. It kind of looks like we have the better rosters for like almost every team. Even some teams that I see kind of fall apart in simulation like the Seahawks, the Eagles. They're some of our highest overall teams while the AFC, their best team is the Chiefs at only an 86, but they have the best record in the league. Or actually, the Dolphins are an 87 overall. We still have the Eagles at an 88, which is better, but the lowest overall team in the league are Arizona. Arizona Cardinals are four and two. Maybe the rookie quarterback is doing really well. I don't know. That's this 
game is interesting. I'm going to make a change to one team, the Dallas Cowboys. Have they just had a hard schedule? They're coming off a loss to the Raiders. Eagles, Bears, Chiefs. The Giants should have been winnable. Oh, they were 0-4 at one point. <laughs> They've just kind of had a really hard schedule, but to be fair, they were getting kind of smoked. Okay, JC Latham is kind of having a rough start to the year, but it's not that bad. We aren't getting as many sacks as the Cowboys usually do. Micah Parsons is, but outside of him, four total sacks. I don't really know what to do about that, though. Okay, I kind of rearranged the depth chart. We also made CD Lamb the slot, ooh, slot receiver to hopefully try to get him a million touches. I kind of rearranged the pass rush group. I made it interesting. We made Micah Parsons the number one on both sides. De I don't know how this is going to work. Demarcus Lawrence the number two and Sam Williams the number three. We'll see what this does. This could backfire or it could work out well. I don't know. And also, unfortunately, for the Cowboys, they have negative 21 mil in cap to work with and have to re-sign Micah Parsons, who isn't interested, Deron Bland, who isn't interested, Jake Ferguson, who isn't interested, Damone Clark, Donovan Wilson, which that's fine. We have Cameron Kinchins. But it is not looking good for the Cowboys, one of our most hopeful teams. <laughs> but we should be able to restructure a lot of deals at the end of the year, so it should hopefully be fine. But speaking of the end of the year, let's get there and let's hope some things can fix themselves for our teams. Okay, well, here we are at the end of year two. And thankfully, kind of surprisingly, we ended up bouncing back in a big, big way. The Eagles finished as the best team at 14 and three, passing the Chiefs by the end of the year. The 49ers and Packers ended up third and fourth at 13 and four. So we had three of the four best teams in the league. And I guess four, four of the six best, if you want to count the Seahawks. Now, did we have the worst team in the league? No, it went to the Browns. Okay, so we had the best and the AFC had the worst. I think we're doing pretty well. The Commanders did, I guess, tie for the worst team, but they get picked too. The Giants and Cardinals also ended up down here. The Bears really struggled in the second half of the year. Or were they struggling? I think they might have been. The Lions ended up being bad. And unfortunately for us, our biggest team, the Dallas Cowboys, finished at 7-10 and 10 and did not make the playoffs. So it's going to be a lot tougher to get a Super Bowl this year with Madden's favorite team not in the playoffs. But let's go super quick over some of the season stats or let's just go over awards. MVP goes to Jalen Hurts again. Jordan Love at number four. Dak at number six. Purdy at seven. Geno Smith at nine. So we had a split for MVP this year and we won it. So that definitely goes in our favor. Nick Sirianni wins another coach of the year. Offensive player of the year goes to Jalen Hurts. Nothing too weird up here. Defensive player of the year goes to Micah Parsons despite them missing the playoffs. Offensive rookie of the year does go to Jamie Cohen. So hopefully the Cardinals can build up the rest of their team. Doug Castle at two. Definitely an interesting list. Two players that I drafted are the top two. That's fun. And Carl Farmer wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. To be honest, I didn't even know how much playing time he would get, but he wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. Casey Walls at two, Henry Buckley at three. It's mostly all players I drafted up here. I don't remember Paul Jennings for sure, so I think that's one I didn't draft. Best QB goes to Jalen Hurts. Christian McCaffrey wins Best Running Back. CeeDee Lamb wins Best Receiver again, I think. Zach Tom wins Best O-Lineman. Micah Parsons wins Best D-Lineman. Rashawn Gary wins Best Linebacker. Are there any, like, actual actual off-ball linebackers up here. Jerome Baker at seven. And I guess Zayvon Collins was one. And best DB goes to Kirby Joseph. I bet they're glad they've drafted so many safeties <laughs> to have that not matter. Ooh, Michael Carter ended up working out for the Panthers. So that was a good move apparently. But let's check out some of the playoff matchups. So the AFC, hmm, I wonder who's gonna come from that side. I guess it could be the Ravens, but they're only a seven seed. So we have 49ers Vikings, Packers Buccaneers, and Falcons Seahawks. Let me try to predict this again. I'm going to guess 49ers. I'll say Packers and Falcons. I'm just going with the highest seed from all three. All three of these could be up in the air, though. I don't know. Who do I think is our best shot at winning the Super Bowl? Maybe the Eagles or 49ers or Falcons. I don't know. I don't know if I feel like sabotaging any teams by using them. So let's just simulate this and we will see who moves on to the divisional. Okay, that's not really what I expected or what I was hoping for. The Vikings beat the 49ers. 
the Packers do beat the Buccaneers, but that was the only one I got right. And the Seahawks beat the Falcons. Thankfully, the Ravens got beat, but I'm gonna hope the conference championship is Eagles-Packers. I guess this one doesn't really matter. I don't even know how many times I've seen either of these teams win a Super Bowl. Might be in the single digits. Okay, and still alive in the conference championship are the Eagles and Packers. Okay, that's probably best case scenario. This is definitely best case scenario. Okay, the Colts are a little scary. <laughs> the Colts upset the Chiefs 31 to 24 and the Steelers beat the Dolphins. This is a weird season. I'm a little scared of the Colts though. I've seen them do pretty well in the playoffs before. I've seen them win some Super Bowls. Same with the Steelers, but it's been a while. I think our best bet is the Eagles. So let's get to the Super Bowl and let's see who's in it. And actually, super quick before we see who's in the Super Bowl, question of the day. I always almost forget to do a question of the day, but let me know this down in the comments. You know, on the theme of being the Washington Commanders here, almost the worst team in the league. Who do you think is gonna be the worst team? And actually, super quick before I forget, question of the day. I forget to do this most of the time, but let me know this down in the comments. On the theme of being the Washington Commanders here, almost the worst team in the league, who do you think is going to be the worst team in the NFL this year in real life? Let me know that down in the comments. I feel like it could be the Washington Commanders, ironically, just the team we're using here. That's kind of what made me think of it. You know, they did some things to fix their offensive line. I just don't know if they were necessarily good things. And it depends on what quarterback they draft. If they throw, I don't know. I'm worried about them picking Jaden Daniels and throwing him out there in a bad situation his rookie year. I like Jaden Daniels a lot, but I feel like you can't go from, you know, a pretty good old line Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas to the commanders and have like a good transition. I don't know. It might be rough, but let me know who you think is going to be the worst team. I guess the draft is still coming up so things could change but we'll see but let's see who's in the Super Bowl it is unsurprisingly going to be the Colts versus the Eagles interesting <laughs> not exactly the Super Bowl I saw coming before the season but an interesting one I still wish it was the Cowboys here though I would feel a lot better about it Ooh, and the Colts are nine and eight that seems like the magic Super Bowl winning record most of the time not most of the time but a good amount of the time oh boy <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna win this one. We deserve to. The Eagles are an 89 to the Colts 85. But as we all know, that doesn't really mean much in Madden, if anything. So we could be breaking even here. Hopefully we go up 2-0. Let's see what happens. And we do. The Eagles win 38 to 37. A one point win for the Eagles. Maybe the closest highest scoring Super Bowl ever? Probably not, but 38 to 37 is a crazy score. How do you even get 37 points? I wonder if they missed an extra point somewhere? Or I guess three field goals, four touchdowns would do it. Either way, we are 2-0 and and let's get into the final year and see if we can move on to undefeated. But as for re-signings, we were able to get mostly every important free agent back for every team with only two major ones we couldn't get back. For the 49ers, I tried my best, but we unfortunately couldn't get Debo Samuel back. We have 2.8 mil left. And Debo Samuel is asking about 22 mil, so uh, that isn't really going to work out, unfortunately. But Madden really only uses one receiver anyways, so I highly doubt Debo's gotten much production, unless he has been the number one receiver, which no, of course not. Shocker. <laughs> and the other major one was Xavier McKinney for the Packers. He just rejected us. We spent the tag on Josh Jacobs because he also rejected us. But other than that, we got pretty much everyone major back for every NFC team. So let's get into free agency and hope... Hopefully there's some good free agents available. Hopefully, I shouldn't say what I was gonna say. Just hopefully there's some good free agents. I don't wanna jinx it, but I probably jinxed it by even thinking what I was thinking. What did I just click? Oh, I clicked retirements. Lou Headley retired? He's been around for three years. Oh no. Joel Batonio retired for the Saints. I never checked this, but I guess it's good to. Ooh, the Jets got kind of screwed over. That's good for us. Darius Slay retired, but that's fine. Teron Armstead retired, that's good for us. This is mostly positive for us thankfully. Other than Joel Batonio, there, were, there weren't really that many retirements at all, though. But in free agency, okay. Oh, I forgot about one. Deron Bland, we couldn't get back for the Cowboys. The Cowboys became 
very expensive. So three of the four best players are unfortunately NFC players, but we could be able to sign them two different NFC teams. So all is not lost, hopefully. Oh yeah, also for the Cowboys, we couldn't get Jake Ferguson back again. They became very broke. I think I, I uh, undersold, not really undersold, but I didn't mention, or I kind of forgot some of the losses. For the Bears, we lost TJ Edwards. For the Eagles, we lost Lane Johnson, CJ Gardner-Johnson, Bryce Huff, it was definitely rough for them having no money, but let me look through here and we will see what the best moves we can make are. Okay, well this is definitely a tougher free agent class. It is good, for sure, but most of our teams are pretty broke <laughs> from spending in recent years and trying to re-sign all the players. And the AFC teams kinda have some money to spend because, you know, we stole most of the free agents last year. I still think we'll get most of the good players, but I'm not sure if we're gonna get Deron Bland, Zay Xavier McKinney, Garrett Wilson, like some of the biggest name free agents available. Most of these guys we should get, but there are guys we're not even going for, like Quincy Williams, because we just can't afford him. We're spending all the money with all of our teams, and still even then, there's some top guys we can't even go for. This is gonna be a super interesting free agent class to see where all these guys go. Cause I've been doing this for so long that I don't even remember where I submitted offers to. This has taken me like two hours to go through all these players. <laughs> Ooh, as the Seahawks, we actually have a little money left. Dron Bla- oh, he's not interested. Xavier McKinney, you know what? We don't really need a safety with the Seahawks. Well, maybe, kinda. Jalen Simpson and Julian Love both went up to Superstar Dev and Sander has Superstar Dev and Hudson has Superstar Dev. Not related to the DBs, but still it's interesting. This could be a really good team. It's an 80 six overall before free agency. Should we go for Deron Bland too? Oh no, we can't afford him. Plus I think, I think it was the Broncos had a full five bar offer, whatever you want to call them. We can't really afford Quincy Williams, but I guess we can steal Leo Chanel. We don't really need a linebacker, but if there's any player we can steal, mine as well. Oh, and Khalil Mack. Only an 81 year over... <laughs> Only an 81 year old, only an 81 overall at 35 years old. But you know, if you've played Madden Simulation or especially if you've watched one of my videos before, he does very well. <laughs> like not just very well, he plays like maybe the best pass rusher in this game at times. At least top five, at least in terms of performance. So we'll probably have a decent wave two here, but let's see, let's actually go very player friendly for Xavier McKinney. Not that I necessarily need him on the Seahawks, but just to steal him away from the AFC. We have three teams with great offers for him or full five-star offers five bar whatever you want to call them the Steelers are the only AFC team so I can't wait for him to sign with the Steelers but let's see who wants to sign where in phase one damn okay so Derrick Henry goes to the Saints that's cool Deron Bland unfortunately goes to the Broncos which that's an insane corner duo I question the scheme fit a little bit <laughs> but sure Garrett Wilson went to the Titans did everything that could go wrong go wrong maybe Joe Tooney went to the Commanders Tyler Algier to the Vikings, Devin Singletary to the Cardinals, Jake Ferguson to the Rams, Geno Stone to the Titans. We're getting unlucky here because we were at least tied for all these players. David Bakhtiari to the Rams, Lane Johnson to the Broncos, or that's the Bears, I'm stupid. Bryce Huff to the Commanders, Patrick Queen to the Cardinals. Y'all see the rest of these, I don't need to keep reading them. But you know, despite getting unlucky with a few, we still got the large majority of players. Darnell Mooney went to the Steelers, but oh no. <laughs> we got all but what, four players? Just the problem was two of those four players happened to be two of the three best players in the class. Or at least two of the four. I forgot Debo Samuel hasn't signed yet, which, by the way... Oh, Xavier McKinney signed to the Seahawks. I forgot it doesn't include our signings in the sign section for some reason. But we got Xavier McKinney, Ryan Ramchek, and Leo Chanel on the Seahawks. Maybe unnecessary, but again, I wanted to steal them. At least for McKinney and Chanel. Ramchek is necessary. We had Stone Force I slated to start at right tackle. That is very hard to say. I don't know how I made it through that without stumbling. Stone Forsyth slated to start at right tackle. That's a hell of a sentence. <laughs> but also yet to sign is Kendall Fuller. I can't remember who I submitted an offer for for him. Let me find out. It was the Bears, and we still have the lead with the Bears, but for how long? Also, Jalen Phillips, Christian Wilkins. There's some pretty important players yet to sign. Trent Brown. The NFC might not come out on top here. It's gonna be close. So I'll go back through this. It's gonna take me probably another at least half hour, and we'll get everything else figured out. But 
But for the rest of the players here, we do have, I think, the lead for almost everybody major. The only one off the top of my head that we don't for sure have a lead for is Christian Wilkins. I think our Cardinals are tied for the Steelers, or tied with the Steelers for the lead of him. But I think literally everybody else, other than like David Montgomery, I'm just not going for him really. Everybody else, I think we do have a lead for down to about here-ish is where I just stopped looking at some positions. But we are going for certain players like Caleb McGarry, Terrell Bernard, I think somewhere I can't remember but probably the final wave of free agency I'm gonna show let's see who wants to sign where okay so mostly everybody left does sign I think we did have an offer submitted for Darius Williams somewhere I can't remember which team but Debo Samuel does go to the Panthers Kendall Fuller goes back to the Commanders Jalen Phillips also to the Panthers the Steelers man Christian Wilkins goes to the Steelers Trent Brown goes to the Vikings Quincy Williams goes to the Commanders TJ Edwards goes back to the Bears which they don't really need another linebacker, but just someone I wanted to steal because they had leftover money. CJ Gardner-Johnson goes to the Vikings. Patrick Queen goes to the Cardinals. Did he already sign... That might have been an old one. Kevin Byard back to the Bears. A lot of new signings, and we mostly kept the AFC away from some players. Like, Dante Jackson went to the Steelers, but I wasn't really going for him. Oh, yeah, and Sam Howell, I think, is going to be the QB for the Falcons next year. Kirk Cousins regressed all the way down to a 73 at 38 years old, so we'll see how Sam Howell does for them. But overall, good free agent class. I just wish we got more of the top guys available. We got a little bit unlucky there, for sure. The Cardinals should have a little money, though. So last part of free agency for this rebuild. Anything we want to do for the Cardinals at all? We probably should. They're not amazing. This is just a really well-balanced team almost to a fault. There isn't really anything we can upgrade, but everything is fine. I guess those kind of mean the same thing, but <laughs> let's go for Khalil Mack. Why not? I don't think this team has had a very good pass rush. Let's go for Zach Sealer. Sure, that's an incremental upgrade, and I don't even know if Christian Watson will play a role, but I saw teams interested. Let's steal him away from the Steelers and the Patriots. Patriots. Sure, why not? Oh, we're out of submissions. Whatever. Y'all will see if we get those players in the team preview for the final year. Let's just get to the draft. This has taken me three hours for this loan free agent period. But a problem I'm running into here is with this balanced approach for building these teams, it kind of left very, very little room for improvement, especially in the draft. Because looking at the Seahawks team, I'm not even sure what we can improve. Maybe, maybe a defensive lineman if we manage to hit a really, really good one. But even then, by the end of the year, Hudson's probably going to be like an 80, 82. So for this draft, I might not even bother with taking some of the picks. Because my drafting hasn't been great so far. We've definitely had some whiffs. Not too bad of whiffs, and they actually ended up working out, but for at least some teams, we might not make their picks even in the first round. We will see. But now in the draft, the... I almost said Bengals, and then I almost said Broncos. I'm losing my mind after this one a little bit. It's been a long time. It's been like three days. But the Browns pick at number one, and they go with Demarcus Calhoun. I'm not going to lie. I haven't really looked at much other than the quarterbacks, which the only first round talent is Randy Davis. He's a first to second round talent. I know that because I scouted him on the Falcons, and I scouted the top three on the Seahawks. He does look pretty good, though. We might take him, but honestly, we don't have that many teams that need a QB. Maybe the Rams, but I'm sure Stafford is still playing well. Let me see. Ah, uh, no, <laughs> not super well. Okay, we might replace Matt Stafford. We'll see. But with our first pick here as the Commanders, this is maybe our worst overall team. We could really go almost any direction here, and it would be fine. Other than front seven, and honestly, our defense as a whole is probably fine fine. Our secondary does have holes, but not major ones. This offense just isn't, it isn't great all the way around. I don't really see any great looking tackles. Big shocker there. Danelle Marsh at center is pretty interesting though. I don't know if he's worth taking at number two overall, but he might be. I guess he is a center, so probably not, but he's probably one of the highest rated players in the class. And like I did last year, I'm not going to show many picks of this draft just for the sake of time, but I do want to find the good players. Jamie Forsett is interesting. He looks good on paper. The only problem is his speed. Solid speed, solid acceleration. That's not great. You know, for offensive players, this looks like a pretty terrible draft, at least early on. There are some good looking players, just they're projected to go a little later, and we're not even 100% sure if they are actually good. Like Jacoby Brooks, eh, he's probably pretty good. It's just, I don't really see a, a necessarily flawless receiver here. In fact, the top two have pretty big flaws 
flaws. Forsett doesn't have very good speed, and Brown isn't a very good receiver other than his route running. He has bad hands and bad release. Not exactly something you want to take at number two overall. There isn't a projected first round tight end, and I definitely wouldn't take a tight end number two overall, obviously, unless they were projected to go top five and they're just insane. I set linebacker as my focus position for the commanders. I don't think that was intentional. Or no, I think I'm still on the Seahawks. Never mind. Honestly, Mike Craig might be the best option, but even then, he ran a 4.49 at the combine. He at least has good speed and elite acceleration. Running a 4.49, I guess he ran a 4.42 at his pro day. Emmanuel Richards, ooh. Okay, <laughs> bad awareness and play rec. Other than that, he looks good though. This is a difficult pick. This, uh, this could be entirely stupid. I realize that. I'm just gonna take a chance on Jamie Forsett. I'm gonna hope the good outweighs the bad, which there is a lot of good and not that much bad, so I'm gonna hope that it outweighs it. He does have hidden dev, 90 speed, 90 excel, we'll take it. Not the fastest in the world, but he makes up for that being 6'3", 225, so we can say this is Drake London or something, but I think Drake London was slower, I don't know. Now things should speed up a little bit. The Giants at number two, they kind of also fall into the same category as the Commanders, where they don't really have many needs on defense, other than I guess corner and safety. Okay, never mind. The only thing is this doesn't look like the best corner class in the world. It looks like a good one, but not the best. Receiver's kind of an issue, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to upgrade it. Same with the O-line. The O-line might be more easily upgradable. It's just, do we want to take a center in the top three? That's not projected to go until the second round. I don't know. Let's go with the maybe more safe pick. Ooh, Rashad Wilkerson. What's your speed? Eh, okay. He has elite strength, though. D player act. Eh. If he had C player act, maybe, but let's go with Mike Craig. Almost sounds like one of those Mike Hunt type names. I love the name Mike and then a short last name. They always give me those vibes, but Mike Craig out of LSU. Let's take him. Another hidden dev, surprisingly. Most corners don't have hidden dev, or at least the ones I take. The Cardinals at number four, which by the way, no, you know what? I'll save that for the team breakdown. This is another team where there aren't really any needs. I don't know what to do. We've stolen so many AFC players that we've kind of left these team with no teams with no needs. I guess it's uh, the best back situation you can be in. Having too much of a good thing. Let's go with a D-lineman. Our D-line is old. Not that it matters. This is the final year, but it's also not that good other than like one player. I'm still trying to figure out how to take defensive tackles and how to spot good ones. So maybe it's not something I should do in the top five. Yeah, maybe not. Should we just take a top five player that looks good in Jerry Cody? He definitely has more of a 4-3 a defensive end build at 6'4", 276, but <laughs> we, we've been a little loose with our D-lineman sizing pause that whole thing sounded weird but jerry cody i don't even know if he's good to be honest he doesn't look like that good of a run defender other than his tackling ability but whatever hidden dev cool we'll just take pretty much the best player i can find and now we have back to back to back afc picks and now maybe the final pick that i'm gonna show or take for the entire draft the saints at number eight i don't know why i went to adjust lineup there are several things wrong with this we have the falcons logo in the background if you can see that and this is clearly the the, the Seahawks and we have the Saints on the clock this game is something else, man. Ooh, this is where we could go with the quarterback. Now, this Saints team is horrible. I will say that. This is the worst team. We couldn't afford to sign anybody. We don't really have a number two, like, good receiver. I guess Keon Coleman could become that. Isaiah Likely's our tight end, which, you know, sounds fine, but by this point, 75 overall, that's not exactly great. Nick Saldaveri at a 68 is projected to be the left guard. We have no right tackle on the roster. Brian Brzee is our best defensive tackle at a 74. He hasn't really developed. This isn't exactly a great team. So really, I don't know if there's a wrong move we can make here unless we get a bad player. <laughs> I think we might just go with the quarterback, Randy Davis. Not exactly the biggest upgrade, but uh, sure. Oh, he has normal dev. Awesome. But now in the draft recap, I see some... Why did the Seahawks go running back in the first round? Adonis Durham. I mean, he's a good running back. They're really just pretending they're the Seahawks. Although they did draft a tackle, so I can't really say that's the case too much. I actually drafted two and a D-lineman. This is definitely not the Seahawks other than taking a running back and a receiver early on. But this is actually a good receiver instead of Gary Jennings or D. Eskridge or something like that. Whatever. This definitely wasn't the best draft class ever, if you couldn't tell. Uh, <laughs> was there an 80 overall beyond the running back? 
Oh, oh, oh. So I was definitely right about Donnell Marsh. And thankfully, thankfully, the commanders ended up getting him. He is an 83 overall. Good lord. This is one of the best centers I've ever seen. And as the NFC, we ended up with the seven best players in the class. There was a 79 overall guard in the third round that the Saints thankfully ended up taking because they need good players. The best player in the class was Kendall Bartow, a running back to the Cardinals. Didn't I sign him a running back? I don't know. Either way, we keep a good player away from the AFC. He has 97 juke move, 96 speed as a rookie. Interesting. Yeah, this definitely wasn't the best top 10 ever. <laughs> Most of those weren't really my fault. The AFC teams had some questionable picks back to back to back. Unlucky. And then my last pick was Randy Davis. Ooh, Sergio Brown was pretty good, 79 overall. I don't really know what to say about this class. It just wasn't that good other than a very good group of three players at not incredibly value pos valuable positions. Well, I can't really say that, just, you know, we all know running back's a little replaceable. I guess a little less so current day. Maybe that was the case a couple years ago, but whatever. I'm just rambling. Let's preview every team for the final time heading into the final season. But here's one last look at the Seahawks heading into the final year of this rebuild. This has been a ton of fun. It's taken me forever, which I know I've mentioned, but it's been worth it. This was a chaotic rebuild in the best way possible. This was a ton of fun. So again, I guess I'll just say this here. If y'all want to see me do the AFC, 3,000 likes and I'll do it, which we've been easily hitting lately. I should probably set it higher, but I won't for some reason. But yeah, that would let me know that y'all want to see another. It helps YouTube know that people enjoy the video. I would appreciate it if you haven't already to leave a like. It sounds stupid, I know, but it helps. But this Seahawks team is kind of ridiculous. I didn't expect this to necessarily become one of the best teams, just because it really isn't in real life. But I guess the reason it isn't that good in real life is because they've completely neglected certain positions. But Phil those needs out here, like the O-line, I guess just really the O-line, it's made this team pretty damn good. Did I even show the defense? <laughs> we have an 88 offense and an 85 defense. Lots of superstars here, no X-Factors, but lots of superstars. But here's a look at the Cowboys. Definitely, I would say our most disappointing team, just because I thought they would really turn into a monster roster, and they didn't even make the playoffs last year. I don't know the last time I've seen that, unless I'm usering them. <laughs> I guess I was, but I it wasn't for the second half of the year and they didn't necessarily bounce back so we'll have to hope that they can do better they did get an x-factor linebacker yeah last year in Hugh McKinley not the best overall yet but could be an 80 something by the end of the year we'll see overall just like it's a good team like an 86 is one of our best I just thought they would be like an 88 or 9 or something kind of like the Philadelphia Eagles who are an 89 overall and this is the rare time where I messed with a team and they actually went up in overall they were an 88 just a second ago. Now they're an 89. I'm sure that'll go back down next week for no real reason. But Jalen Hurts is up to a 99. This team is very good. We also signed Jack Conklin to the Vikings. I've done this a few times where I've already signed a player to that position, but for some reason I just forgot <laughs> and signed another one. So we cut Jack Conklin and signed him over here because the Eagles were the most tackle needy team and it turned them into the best team probably in the league. We'll check in a second at the end of this. This is a team that's lost a few players through the rebuild but still just in how this roster is constructed it still stayed as the best team in the league if you couldn't tell from you know how i've or what i've said on the channel before i'm a bit of a, a howie roseman meat writer i feel like there's definitely a better <laughs> word i could use a respecter we'll say that and the washington commanders have actually become pretty good here you know you would hope with back to back to back top five picks i think but you know at least they got here there have been teams in recent history that have had back to back to back to back super high picks and still haven't become good. So at least we are here as the commanders. This isn't the craziest team ever, but it is definitely good. The secondary is maybe the most overcrowded with mid I have ever seen. We're like nine deep with players that could start, but I, I still don't know who to start. I guess this is fine as is. We also have this hidden dev safety, but he's only a 73 overall. We'll just start Jartavius Martin. I don't know. This is a weird team. Oh yeah, and they have the rookie receiver, Jamie Forrest, and the rookie center, the second best player in the class, Danelle Marsh. So this could be a sleeper team to do pretty well this year. Now that I said that, they're going to be horrible, but hopefully they're good. Oh yeah, and I've been going kind of quickly through these, so feel free to, you know, pause and look at the teams if you really want to, or skip through them, whatever you want to do. But here's a look at the Rams heading into the final year. Another maybe disappointing team. I thought this is a team that could really be one of our best, kind of like the Cowboys, but it's just good. It is 
is worse than the Cowboys, actually, but it doesn't look too bad on paper. Just it's kind of held back by Matt Stafford only being a 77 overall at this point. But honestly, this team looks really good, especially the receiving core. The O-line is good all the way through. Really insane tight end group. They drafted two really good hidden dev rookie tight ends. I don't know. I'm surprised this team isn't a better overall, but it should hopefully do well. I mean, it could underperform naturally. You know, probably about half of these teams are going to underperform. We'll just see what happens. But here's a look at the 49ers. Maybe our most expensive team. I guess there are a lot of expensive teams, but this is maybe the team where we really couldn't sign many players and mostly just had to hold on to the ones we could as much as we could and hope that the CPU would do well in the draft. And really, the CPU didn't do a lot in the draft. <laughs> I mean, I drafted Claxton. I guess the CPU drafted Richardson. Ellison at number two tight end. That would be cool if he was a starter, but he isn't. Jalen McMillan, I guess. That's cool. And really not much on defense other than Jennings and Edison. I guess it did draft DJ James, but this is really mostly just the 49ers without a couple players, with very few added through free agency and a few added through drafts. I guess you could say the same for most teams here, but <laughs> this is really the one that didn't really grow too much, even with development, but it's still good. But here's a look at the Lions heading into the final year. Also one of our better teams at an 86 overall. I'm going to be super interested to see what the best teams overall are, like including the AFC, because I wonder if we do have all of the best teams, like the entire top three. It sounds crazy, but it is possible because we've been stealing like every free agent. <laughs> I don't know if we'll have every top three because the Chiefs exist and the Dolphins exist, but we'll see. Anyways, with the Lions, receiver's a little bit of a concern. I mean, Alec Pierce is fine, but other than that, this team is good. <laughs> if they didn't have Aiden Hutchinson on defense, this would be a pretty horrible defense, but it is, it's good. This offense is good too, but for some reason it doesn't, it doesn't feel as good as an 88 overall. I guess it's kind of carried by Amon Ross St. Brown, Frank Ragnow, Panay Sewell, but it's, it's good. I just don't know how this team will do in simulation. We'll see. Simulation seems to favor well-rounded teams most of the time over teams with super dominant players. I guess it depends on the position of those players. I don't know. We'll just see what happens. The Lions could surprise me. They deserve to do well, but we'll see. And here's a look at the Packers heading into our final year. This is a very good team still with Josh Jacobs, Jordan Love. These teams have really remained similar to where they are in real life, whereas in this point, you know, three years in the future, most of these teams are going to be like completely unrecognizable. But I think we've done pretty well to keep these teams together while also building on them and making them better. We also signed Shaq Barrett to the Packers because they had the biggest hole at edge. Those are certainly two words to almost put back to back, but Shaq Barrett is another player like Khalil Mack where, you know, despite what overall they regress down to, they still do pretty well. Now Shaq Barrett doesn't do as well as Khalil Mack. It looks like he wasn't very good for the Bills in 2025, but this year maybe he can do well. We'll see. No sacks in the preseason, but who really cares? It's preseason. The only concern I have with this offense is left tackle. Did Jeremiah McCoy play in the preseason. I know I just said preseason doesn't matter. He didn't allow any sacks, so maybe he'll do well. We'll see. But overall, good team. Not our best on paper, but it should hopefully do pretty well. Why am I looking at Jeffrey Dahmer on my TV? I don't know what they're talking about. But here's a look at the Carolina Panthers. This is one of the, like, more similar offenses to their offense in real life. I mean, we still have their whole offensive line. We still have Tommy Tremble, even though he's not a starter. Bryce Young, Chuba Hubbard. We at least have one of their starting receivers in Deontay Johnson, I guess. Maybe two if you count Jonathan Mingo. But this defense is definitely very upgraded. I guess so is the offense, especially the receiving core. But we have a much better pass rush now with Jalen Phillips and Zadarius Smith, but we still have Jadavion Clowney. We have, what's his name? <laughs> Calvin Smith. The D-line is very, very good. Maybe our best D-line, other than probably the Eagles. The corner group is good. The safeties are good enough. This is a team that, you know, is only an 84 overall, but could do pretty well. We'll see. And here's a look at the Buccaneers heading into the final year. 85 offense, 87, none of that was right. 85 overall, 87 offense, 84 defense. This is just a boring team, straight up. I don't know why. I just don't really care about this team. It's the Buccaneers with like a few players, but nobody n n like that notable was added to this team. I don't want to talk about this team. It's boring. <laughs> but here's a look at the Vikings. Up to an 85 overall, 89 offense. Really though? Jaden Daniels hasn't really developed that much. I mean, he's up to an 82, which is good, but by this point, that's 
only the 20th ranked quarterback in the league. Like, that isn't great. But he's been playing really, really well. Definitely a lot of picks, but I bet he also has rushing. No, <laughs> this playbook just doesn't rush as the QB. Whatever, that's fine. Definitely a really good offense. Just can't really say the same for the defense. This is a pretty horrible defense. I think it is our worst. And maybe the biggest difference between offense and defense. Don't quote me on that, but maybe. The Eagles could have an eight overall difference between offense and defense, but I don't know. Hopefully the Vikings do well, but I don't know. We'll just have to see. I guess they did do well last year, so you never know. And now for one of our worst teams, unfortunately, the New York Giants. Definitely hindered by the Daniel Jones contract. We were able to cut him, but we still have a ton of dead cap. It is an 83 overall team, which probably isn't the worst in the league. If I had to I guess I would probably say the Browns or have we gotten to the Saints yet? I don't think we have. We'll see how the Saints are looking. I don't think it'll be great. But this is a team that <laughs> we're just gonna kind of forget that they exist. Does that sound good? I think so. Watch this team go like 13 and 4. Wouldn't shock me. Okay, yeah, the Saints are the worst team so far. They're an 82 overall, which isn't great, believe it or not. At least by this point. <sighs> I might, I might do something interesting at the end of the year if this team does do as poorly as it should, which it wouldn't shock me if it didn't, because the run game matters probably more in this game than it does in real life, and Derrick Henry could absolutely carry them, we'll see. Not gonna lie, he looks kinda, kinda fire in the Saints uniform. I don't know why, that's very, that's very fitting. The gold gloves and sleeves are interesting. But if this team is not in the playoffs by the end of the year, we might cut at least Derrick Henry and some him to a playoff team with a bad run game which you know might not happen because like I said the run game is pretty important in this game and like I said earlier it's become more important in real life as of late but we'll just see what happens I feel like I've said that about a million times in this video but that's what most of this game is about the Atlanta Falcons are pretty good at an 85 overall but this is a, a very 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 interesting team of course mostly because of the quarterback Sam Howell why can I not click him I was trying to move him even though I didn't hold the button. Okay, sure. We'll see how he does. I have no idea. He does well in this game usually, but if he does well, it's usually on the Commanders, a team that he's not even a part of in real life anymore. But I will say the Falcons usually make Desmond Ritter good, so maybe that'll have the same effect here with Sam Howell. We'll see. This could be a good team, even though it isn't the best overall. It is still a good one. 87 offense, 84 defense with at least a little room to grow. I guess this team isn't super young, but players like Dallas Turner, Chris Braswell, Morris at safety, like they're still young young pieces sprinkled throughout this team a little bit. But here's a look at the Bears heading into the final year. Oh, my PC's starting to lag. I don't know if that's showing up in the recording. I've been doing this for too long, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but the Bears have an 88 offense, only an 83 defense, though. This defense isn't anything special. There are a few good players like Jalen Johnson, Montez Sweat, but it's mostly just the Bears' good defensive players. I'm sensing a little bit of a theme here, again. <laughs> you know, this strategy definitely resulted in a lot of teams being similar to where they were at the beginning, but again, we'll see in a second how effective this strategy was to kind of just keep every team's players as much as we can and just try to fill out the problems. The Bears are definitely a pretty good team. They could definitely be one of our underperformers based on the preseason though, we'll see. We need a we'll see counter. I've probably said that about maybe getting close to like 30 times. I don't know. But here's a look at our final team, the Arizona Cardinals. Not our worst team, but definitely not our best. Maybe our, I don't think there are only 83 overall, but we don't have many 83 overall teams. Overall, it is a good roster, but a really weird roster. Just not much star power on this team overall, other than like Buda Baker and I guess Jamie Cohen. So we'll see how he does. He gained a throw power throughout this, now up to 96 throw power, still 97 speed though. That would have been cool if he went up to 99 speed by the end of this, but I guess who knows? There's still a year. What's his archetype? It is Scrambler, so maybe. But that is the final team. And let's check out some overalls of the AFC teams super quick. So the AFC definitely has some decent teams, but I think we do have the two best in the NFL. The 49ers at an 87 and the Eagles at an 89. The AFC has teams like the Chiefs at an 86, the Ravens at an 86, and I I think that's it. Yeah, I don't see another 86 for them. And we have a lot of 86 overall teams like the Cowboys. I'm not going to list them all. You've seen them. But what is the worst team in the league? I think it might be one of our teams. It actually is 
isn't. I forgot the Saints went up to an 82. For some reason, I still thought they were an 80. The Patriots are the worst team at an 81 overall, so not our responsibility. The Saints were definitely the toughest team because of their cap situation, but even then, they aren't the worst team in the league, so we'll take it. But let's get straight to the end of the year, and let's see how we can end off this rebuild. Okay, and here we are at the end of this rebuild, and oh yeah, I'm realizing, before I reveal how we did in the final year, I was supposed to tell y'all what I'm planning for the AFC one if we, of course, hit 3,000 likes, which, you know, be sure to leave a like on the video. I kind of mentioned this strategy earlier when I, when I was kind of, like, thinking of what we should do, but for the AFC one, I'm thinking of either doing one super team per division or just one super team overall and sacrificing every other team for one team, which that might be a little cheesy. I kind of do like the one super strong team per division, just the one I think could do best in simulation. And I think that's what I might do, but let me let me know in the comments which one I should do, or if you have a different, somewhat realistic strategy for this. I guess this whole thing as a concept isn't realistic, but it definitely is fun. This is the most I've ever wanted to keep going in a rebuild. So I think that says something. I just, unfortunately, <laughs> this is too- I haven't uploaded in five days. <laughs> I try to upload almost daily, so we better hit 3,000 likes. It better be worth it. But last thing before I show how we did in year three, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Most people don't even realize, or not most people, but some people don't even realize they're not subscribed. They think they are and they aren't, so be sure to check if you are. Because if you like my videos, then it'll help you see more of my videos. Because, you know, some people like them, don't subscribe, and they never get recommended again. So be sure to subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100k before the end of the year. So if... Also, I'm plugging a lot here, but if you know anyone that might enjoy this video, be sure to share it with them. I know this is a goofy video, but this was a lot of fun. I thought this was really fun. But anyways, in year number three, here's what happened. So unfortunately for our division, the NFC West, most teams finished around 500. Teams just kind of beat up on each other, apparently. Pause. I tried to change playbooks and, like, depth charts of struggling teams, and it worked out a little bit. It made the Seahawks' defense worse, though. It did make their offense better, but they were only, like, 2-4 and four at the midseason, so I guess they did get better, but not good enough to make the playoffs. But for the overall standings, I actually haven't checked this yet. I don't know what the one seeds are. I would guess... It's obviously the Chiefs for the AFC, but the Browns made the playoffs? They were like an 82 overall. God, dude. But I'm not sure who it's gonna be for the NFC. It's not the Eagles, it's not the Cowboys, which we're lucky we they made the playoffs. I checked the standings at the midseason, and I can't remember who was leading for us. I think it was the Eagles. It's not the 49ers. Who's our one seed, even looking at the stats? I highly doubt it's the Bears. They were really bad at the midseason. Is it the Bucks? <laughs> Am I just completely blanking on a good team? Team. All right, enough trying to guess. Let's see who it is. It is the Minnesota Vikings. Okay, I was thinking of them, but they weren't very good at the midseason. They were like three and four. And unfortunately, for the first time, we might have been too balanced for our own good. The AFC has the two top teams in the NFL. The Chiefs at 14 and three and the Ravens at 14 and three. The Vikings went 12 and five, and that was our only 12 and five team. There were quite a few 11 and sixes, a couple 10 and sevens, lots of nine and eights and eights and nines that's really hard to say but luckily for us we might have gotten our best teams in the playoffs we did sneak the falcons in the panthers the cowboys the 49ers the packers and i've seen the vikings win some super bowls before so we'll see oh yeah in the eagles I almost missed the eagles this is the year where i'm least confident in us winning a super bowl thankfully the colts aren't in it for the afc the raiders aren't in it and the worst team in the nfl also did belong to us the saints going to and 15. So despite completely dominating the AFC in terms of overall, of course, this is the year where they do better. Who would have guessed? <laughs> I should have mentioned that before the season. I was literally thinking it before I started recording. I was like, wow, we just have every good team. Can't wait for the AFC to win it. But oh well, it is what it is. Let's go super quick over the... I guess we'll just get straight to the awards. <sighs> we have the first non-NFC MVP. It goes to Josh Allen with Lamar at number two and Mahomes at number three. Jalen Hurts is the first NFC quarterback on the list at number four. Jordan Love also up there, Jaden Daniels, Brock Purdy, but it is definitely dominated by the AFC. Offensive player of the year goes to Christian McCaffrey, not Jalen Hurts for the first time. Jalen Hurts has been weirdly 
really good here. I mean, he's good at times in rebuilds, but it's rare where he is like our best player or the NFC's best player three years in a row. I don't know if I've ever seen that. Micah Parsons wins his third defensive player of the year in a row. I think it would be easier to count the amount of times he doesn't win defensive player of the year in franchise than it would be to count the times he does. This game just loves him. And Jamie Forsett wins offensive rookie of the year for the commanders. And Jerry Cody wins defensive rookie of the year. We'll check those stats. Why not? Ooh, Jaden Daniels, 41 touchdowns, 73% completion percentage. He wasn't higher for MVP. I mean, he had picks, but like, I don't know. That many touchdowns with that high of a completion percentage, you're doing something right. Jamie Forsett, 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. I kind of thought he would do a little better, but he was having to split with Terry McLaurin. That makes sense. And Jerry Cody, not many sacks, but 18 tackles for loss. What's his dev trait? Superstar? That was definitely a really good pick. Was he the number one pick? Or no, he was top five, right? Number four, yeah. Definitely wasn't a need at the time, but it ended up working out. Oh yeah, and I want to see, <laughs> you know, Micah Parsons has won defensive player of the year for the NFC three years in a row. Did he have a ridiculous amount of sacks. I mean, a very, very good amount, but not like destroying the record like we see sometimes. Also, 17 sacks from Parsons, 10 and a half for Lawrence, 10 for Odigizua. This was a borderline playoff team that was two and four at the midseason. We had a lot of two and four teams at the midseason. Good lord. And finally, to finish off this rebuild, let's see what the playoff matchups are gonna be. We actually got really lucky with the teams that made the playoffs. I mean, these are maybe the best performers for the NFC in the playoffs in this game. For some reason, it feels like regular season and postseason performance are two different things in this game, like teams perform differently, which does happen in real life, but in this game, it's almost the opposite. I guess the Cowboys are good in the regular season in this game, but not for me whenever I use them. But once they get to the playoffs, they're just unstoppable. Not exactly the same thing in real life. It's, it's interesting. But I'm gonna predict, wishful thinking, I'm gonna hope it's the Cowboys, although I don't know, the Eagles would be fine too. It could be the Falcons upsetting the 49ers, but I feel like the 49ers roster might be too good. We'll say the Falcons just for fun, and I'm gonna guess Panthers. So we'll see who moves on to the conference championship. I didn't necessarily expect the Vikings to be our one seed in the final year, but now in the next week, let's see who's still alive. It is the Cowboys, 49ers, and Packers. So I got none of those right. <laughs> I went 0 for 3. Oh, the Texans beat the Browns 56 to 17. The Browns shouldn't have been here in the first place, though. I don't know how they made it. They've lost their entire team. Unfortunately, the Chiefs and Ravens are still alive in the AFC. But I'm going to predict, you know, if I'm I'm wrong for all these first ones, I'm going to predict Vikings Packers, hoping that both of those are wrong, because I think the Cowboys and 49ers are our two best shots at a Super Bowl for this final year. And I really want to go 3-0. and And it is going to be, oh, okay, it is going to be Cowboys 49ers, but the Chiefs got upset by the sixth seed Denver Broncos, who also upset the Bills in the wild card. Forgot what it was called for a second. I don't know why. I almost called it the divisional. So this is, I mean, this is kind of deja vu of like 2012 or 11 or whatever year that was in that really good Ravens Broncos playoff game. And then this is just a rivalry game, Cowboys 49ers. An old rivalry game back when those teams actually won Super Bowls like 30 years ago, but still a rivalry game, I guess. But let's simulate this game. I, I don't know who I want to win on each side. I would say the Broncos because I think they're e more easily beatable, but I mean, they've been beaten the good teams. We'll just see what happens. I feel better about beating the Broncos, but they're on kind of a run right now. And it, of course, is going to be a Cowboys Ravens Super Bowl. That would have been fun to have like anything else. <laughs> have we had the same Super Bowl every year? No, I have no recollection of what it was last year. I, I could be lying, but big shocker, a 9 and 8 team makes the Super Bowl. Who would have guessed? Not like that happens every year. So should I user the Cowboys for simulating this game? Nah. No, we'll leave it like it is. I wish I could use her the Ravens to curse them. But for the final Super Bowl, I did what I could. We built literally the best rosters in the NFL. The AFC had the better performance in the regular season. Big shocker. But can we go three for three on Super Bowls? Let's find out. No. <laughs> the Cowboys get stomped 24 to 10 by the Ravens. You hate to see it. But this was a crazy fun rebuild. I know I say this all the time, but this was genuinely my favorite rebuild I've ever done. This is, like I said, the most I've ever wanted to continue, but I will take the time to do another again if we hit 3,000 likes. Let me know what y'all thought of it. I could see this being a, I mean, it's definitely a very different video from what I usually do, even though it is, you know, the same topic, rebuilding a team in franchise. Just the layout was definitely different.
different. So let me know what y'all thought. I hope you guys did enjoy though. Of course, subscribe for more and on screen now is probably a video that YouTube thinks you would like. So feel free to click one of those. But thank you all so, so much for watching. And with that, I will see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.